how to photograph Comet Leonard step by step. Hello, Photopiller, Rafael the Bar here. Exciting news! Comet Leonard is brightening and it might be even visible to the naked eye in December 2021 and the January 2022. But for sure it will be visible with binoculars, telescopes and cameras. Cameras on a star tracker are even better to catch a powerful tail of the comet. So in this video I want to give you all you need to photograph it. When and where the comet is visible, all the gear you need and all the camera settings you need to nail the shot. Let's go! Comet C2021A1 got its name Leonard from the astronomer Greg Leonard who first discovered on January 3rd, 2021. Comet Leonard is expected to be the brightest comet of 2021. Comets are usually brightest in their perihelion. This is when they are closest to the Sun. For Comet Leonard, this will occur around January 3rd, 2022. But you may think, that's great Rafa, but when the comet will be closest to Earth? Well, according to NASA, Comet Leonard will be closest to Earth on December 12th, 2021 at around 1354 UTC. At the same time, it has been predicted that its magnitude could be between 5 and 2.6, which is great news. Why? Well, because magnitudes below 4, it implies that the comets are visible to the naked eye. The lower the magnitude, the brighter the comet will be, giving us a <laughs> a wonderful opportunity to photograph the comet with its strong tail. So the question is, when is the best time to photograph Comet Leonard and where in the sky it will be? So we know where to frame our cameras. Well, it depends on the hemisphere you are in. In the northern hemisphere, Comet Leonard will be visible in December and in January. In December, the comet will cross both its constellation, increasing its brightness as it gets closer to the sun. Around December 8th, Comet will pass above the constellation of Serpents Caput, known as the Serpent Head, and it might reach a magnitude of 4, being visible to the naked eye. Before dawn, look to the east in the direction of the sunrise, and you'll see Comet Leonard around 30 degrees above the horizon. So if you want to photograph it, you need to know where the sun will rise. So, and where is the sun rising on, for example, December 8th? Easy, just go to photo pills tap on planner and place the red pin you see on the map on the location you wish to photograph the comet. Now set the day to, for example, as I said, December 8th, go to December 8th. And now on the map you have the sunrise direction, which is the thick yellow line, this one, and the sunset direction, which is the thick orange line that one. And on the top panel you have the sunrise and sunset time. So on December 8th go to your planned red pin position, I have it here in Fava, in Cavalleria Lighthouse in Menorca, get there before down and look in the direction of the sunrise which is the thick yellow line. And you'll see Comet Leonard more or less at 30 degrees above the horizon. Where you're in the red pin position, tap on the AR button here and look for the sunrise direction. I have the horizon here, so this is gonna be my sunset. My sunrise is right over there. You see us that the sun is rising right over here. And now count the degrees above the horizon. This is the horizon, so this is 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. So coming on Leonard should be around these directions. Use an AR augmented reality to find where the sun will be rising and then you know it will be super easy for you to find Comet Leonard. Okay let me switch off the sun, the moon layer so I can see the sunrise and sunset directions better. Tap on the map settings button here and tap on the eye next to the moon layer to switch it off and now yes I have my sunrise and sunset directions visible on the map. Pretty cool. Okay, well on December 12th, let's set the day to December 12th by swiping the time bar. So I have the sunrise and sunset directions here on the map. On December 12th, Comet Leonard will be closest to Earth and is expected to be even brighter. Starting on December 13th, 14th, Comet Leonard will be visible in the sunset direction. This thick orange line you have here. It will be visible at dusk and very low in the sky. 
And as the days go by, at the end of December and in January, Comet Leonard will not be visible for latitudes above 30 degrees. This is what's going to happen in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, and let me move the red pin to a place in the southern hemisphere, for example, here in Namibia. In the southern hemisphere, starting on December 15th till the end of January, you'll be able to see Comet Leonard in the southwest, in the sunset direction at dusk and pretty low in the sky. And as the day goes by, the comet will be less and less bright till the end of February, where you'll find Comet Leonard in the southeast directions, in the sunrise direction before dawn. Okay, now that you know when and where the comet Leonard will be visible, it's time to find a cool subject that can play along with Comet Leonard and use photo pills to plan a powerful shot, a powerful composition. Perfecto, perfect, perfect. Let's see now the gear you need to photograph Comet Leonard. To photograph Comet Leonard, you'll need your camera, of course, a sturdy tripod and head, and a shutter release or an interbellometer. Why? Because the less you touch the camera, the better. The last thing you want is to, you know, introduce vibrations into the system and get a blurry image. So use a shutter release and interbellometer and do not touch the camera at all. The lens choice depends on the image you want to capture. One option is to use a wide angle lens to introduce the landscape in the photo. Use Comet Leonard as a key element in your composition, like for example Antoni Claire did in this photo of the Neowise comet. Another option is to use a, a telephoto lens, a long focal length, to capture a close-up of the comet. You know, 30mm, 500mm, 1000mm, the longer the better. Use even a telescope if you have one. Also, you have an equatorial mount, a star tracker, use it. It will help you shoot much longer exposures and thus capture more detail in the tail of the comet. By the way, if you wish to learn how to use a star tracker, I recommend you to watch this masterclass here by Dan Safra. He gave an amazing class. Great, now that you have the plan and the gear you need, let's see the camera settings you need to photograph Comet Leonard, both when you're using a wide-angle lens and when you're using a telephoto lens. Let's go! Let's imagine that you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you wish to photograph Comet Leonard on December 12th, when it's closest to Earth, when it's super super bright. As we've seen, on December 12th, Comet Leonard will be visible in the sunrise direction right before dawn. So, on the shooting date, arrive at the location one hour or so before the shooting time and set up the gear at the planned shooting spot. This is the red pin position. Also, use the mental reality views of photo pills to find where the sun will rise, so you know where you can uh, find the comet Leonard. When you find it, well, it's time to frame the camera to compose the shot. So choose the focal length that gives you the frame you want and set the camera to manual. Because you'll be shooting at low light conditions, open the diaphragm. Set a wide aperture like f1.4 or f2.8. Use the widest aperture you can. Regarding the exposure time, regarding the shooting speed, use the longest exposure time you can that keeps the comet Leonhardt as a dot in the sky, not a trail. Try for example 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 25 seconds and see the difference. You can also use the spot stars calculator here include in photo pills to calculate the maximum exposure time you need to, you can use to get the stars or the comet as a dot and not trail. We use this calculator a lot when we're photographing the Milky Way for example. If you wish to learn how to use it, watch this video. Also if you're using a star tracker you'll be able to shoot a much longer exposure and capture more detail in the comet and in its tail. Of course, in this case, you'll need to take an extra, an extra, an extra photo of the foreground to blend it with the photos you take of the sky, the comet in post processing. Now, given the aperture and the shutter speed you've set, uh, set the ISO that gives you a photo correctly exposed. Probably you'll have to push the ISO up to 800, 1600, 3200, or more. Now, where to focus? There are a few options. If you have an interesting subject in the foreground, I recommend you to focus on your subject. Actually, I recommend you to calculate the hyperfocal distance based on your settings and make sure that your subject falls behind the hyperfocal distance. This way, when focusing on your subject, the comet Leonard will be also acceptably sharp. What's the hyperfocal distance? Well, uh, it's a very important photography uh, tool. You want to master it. 
watch this video. We use it all the time to photograph the Milky Way, to photograph landscapes. If you wish to have Comet and Leonard super super sharp, in this case focus on the Comet, but be aware that your foreground, your subject might be a bit uh, bluer, not that sharp. Another option is to do a focus tag. You should shot for the sky, for the comet, uh, focusing on the, com on the comet Leonard, and then shoot uh, several shots of the foreground, uh, focusing on the at different spots. So you make sure that you, that you have the whole foreground in focus, and then you blend all the images, the sky and the foreground images, in post to get a perfectly sharp image. Okay, what else? Ah, finally! If you're getting a too dark foreground when you're shooting the scene, remember that you'll be shooting in uh, low light conditions, it's always a good idea to use two light panels, place them far away at a real low power to add light from the side in the scene and create volume and texture, texture on your subject. Now, take a take shot and make sure that the foreground, the sky, the comet and the exposure looks good, that the image you're, you've taken is good. If not, just make the necessary adjustments. If you wish to send the viewer's attention on the comet, to shoot a close-up of the comet, use the longer focal length you have available. 300 mil, 500 mil, 1000 mil. Use the widest aperture available in your lens to capture as much light as possible. But if you're using a star tracker, I recommend you to close the maximum aperture by one or two stops to get a better image quality. For example, um, from 2.8 to f4. Where to focus? Well, that's super easy. Just focus on your comet, Comet Leona. You want it as sharp as possible. The idea here is to capture the, the super detailed comet with a very powerful strong tail. If you're not using a star tracker, set the shutter speed to half a second or one second. Try not to go much over uh, one second because due to the rotation of the Earth, you might get a blurry comet. Of course, this is not true when you're photographing uh, the comet with a star tracker. In this case, test different shutter speeds from one second to 10 seconds, for example until you get the shutter speed that works for you. Finally, given the shutter speed and the aperture you've set, set the ISO to 100, 1600, 3200, the ISO you need to get the photo correctly exposed. If you're using a star tracker, probably you won't need to push ISO above 800, but you, might, you may need it. So take a few test shots and use the settings that give you the photo you want. And finally, and this is a good idea to do when you're shooting both with a wide-angle lens or with a telephone lens, the idea is to take uh, several shots, 10, 20 shots, and then stack them in post to get a much powerful view of the comet. Well, and this is how you can photograph Comet Leonard. If you have a question, please leave a comment below. And if you wish to learn more about photographing comets or any other astronomical event, I recommend you to download our super detailed astronomical event photography guide. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Download it. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday with another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot. Legendary photos, bye!